Mr. Kline, here for Kline Maths. Today we're going to look at vectors, full topic, and overpass paper questions at higher maths, including revising everything you need to know from National 5 maths vectors, everything in this list, basically. Let's just get started straight away. So, the vectors revision from National 5. A vector is a quantity that has a magnitude and a direction. As a result, we can describe vectors, vectors as basically having directional growth. It's lines that can get bigger or smaller, essentially. So, let's have a look at a vector. It usually looks like this, sometimes drawn or most of the time drawn a coordinate grid, but it doesn't have to be. So there is a vector, let's label that A to B. And we can call that vector two things. We can say it's a vector A to B, just like so. Or, quite often when we want to do algebraic manipulation, we can give it a name and we can just say it's vector, say U, or whatever you want. Underlined usually, and if it's tight, we would be bold for that usually as well. So there's your how to name a vector. Okay, components of a vector. So we can write vectors in components form, usually x, y, z, as shown here. And what that means is move along x in the x direction, backwards or forwards, then up y, and then along z if it's three dimensions. So 2, 7 means, means move 2 in the x direction, and then 7 in the y direction. So if this was on a coordinate grid, we go along the x-axis up the y-axis, so you would have maybe a vector here. There's a vector, very simply. And this distance here would be 2, and this distance here would be 7, making a right angle basically there. Obviously, I'm not drawing that to scale, just a quick illustration. Similarly, this 2, 7, 3 would mean move 2 in the x-direction, 7 in the y-direction, and finally, 3 in the z direction. The magnitude of a vector. The magnitude or length of a two-dimensional vector is found. In a similar way, we find the distance between two points. So let's say we've got the vectors a to b. Then if we had this vector here, say, this length here would be a, and this length here would be b, and this is the vector u. So if we want to know the length of this vector, it's basically, well, it is Pythagoras, because it's just a right angle triangle. So the length of u, which we denote the size of u, modulus u, is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. And similarly, for three dimensions, it works the same way. Just like Pythagoras in three dimensions, the size of u for this one would be the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So you just take both the numbers and square them and then square out the answer to find the magnitude of a vector. And just note, note that a new type of way to write it, bar and bar, shows is the magnitude. So if you ever see that, you're working out the magnitude by Pythagoras. Equal vectors. So vectors are equal if they have the same magnitude and the same direction. But it does not matter where in the page you draw that vector. So on a coordinate grid or in a shape, Two vectors can be equal as long as they have the same direction and the same magnitude. Let me give you a quick example of that by drawing a shape. If I draw a quick box like this and I copy, I just go down and down, and I copy that same direction there. Although they're diff drawn in different places, if this was A, B, C and D, and I labelled that one U, this would also be U. A to B would equal C to D, okay? So we can say that in terms of vector components. If I had vector A, B, C, and I also had equal, that was equal to vector P, Q, and R, then that means that A must equal P, B must equal Q, and C must equal R. In other words, doesn't matter where you draw these vectors, if I had a vector here, and I called this vector u, if I copied that picture of the vector, let's just copy it now, and pasted it anywhere else I wanted, even if I called it something else, like w, w would equal u. It'd be the same vector, same direction, same magnitude. Okay, let's look at adding vectors. So since vectors have directional growth, you can just add in the way you would think you'd add. You can add the x components, the y components, and the z components. And that means you'll be adding the vectors. The x gets bigger, the y gets bigger, and the z gets bigger. Let's give you an example of this. Let's say we had u was equal to 8 minus 2, 0. And we had v was equal to 4, 6 minus 3. 
then we can just add them, u plus v, by adding 8 and 4, minus 2 and 6, and 0 and minus 3. So that's obviously 12, 4, and minus 3. Now, pictorial, that looks a little bit differently. Let's consider the vectors A. Let's say this was A. And we wanted to add B. Let's say this was B. We want to do A plus B. You draw them tip to tail. So you would draw A again. I'll just draw it roughly. There's A. A started here and goes to there. So the new vector B starts with it A ends. So I would draw A from here to here. So there it is. And A dot B would be, A plus B would be represented by whatever the direction is to get from A to the end of here, B. So I can just join them up and that would represent A plus B. So there's A plus B there. So that's what it represents as a picture. Now we can do the same with taking away because we can think of take away as adding a negative. So let's just again say we had u was equal to 8 minus 2, 0. And v was equal to 4, 6 minus 3. If I wanted to do u minus v, then I can just do take away the components. 8 minus 4, minus 2, minus 6, and 0, minus, minus 3. Watch out for double minuses. That would give me 4, minus 8, and 3. Now, what does that look like as a picture? Well, let's consider a and b again. There was vector a, and vector b was like this. If we're taking away b, it means b is changing direction. So if I want to work out a minus b, I need to draw a. And then since b is now going to go that direction, then it starts here and ends here. So I need to go in that direction from a. So a minus b, I would draw there. And that would be minus b. And the resultant vector would be what we get from here to here, start to finish. And that would be a minus b, with that direction there, a minus b. Okay, multiplying by a scalar, by a scalar we mean just not a vector, just a number. So multiplying a vector by a number. Well, if you multiply a vector by a number, let's say we double a vector, it just means we're doubling the x, the y, and the z. So you just double every single component of your vector. For instance, let's say we had u was equal to 8 minus 2, 0. If I wanted to work out 3u, I would just do 3 lots of 8 minus 2, 0, which is 24 minus 6 and 0. And what does that mean? It means that the direction of the vector hasn't changed because it's all went up by 3, a factor of 3. But the length of it's changed by a factor of 3, so it's 3 times bigger. So in other words, looking at it pictorially, if I had a vector, let's say a here, and that was some length, if 2a would be double the length but in the same direction. And similarly, I could times by a fraction if I wanted to, and actually I could times by a negative. So let's say I went like that, and that was a half of a. That's a half the size of a, but it's now in the opposite direction, so it would be minus a half the size of a. Hopefully that makes sense. Position vectors. A vector from the origin to point A is called the position vector of A, OA, or small a. So what does that look like if we take a coordinate grid and we have a point A, then from the origin, which is 0, 0, that's called the origin, we have a vector, and that would be O to A, or vector A. Now the point, the point with this is, if I was to change my pen colour here and draw what this vector is, I would have along these two places, this way and that way. That would be the same as the coordinate of the point, so you've turned a coordinate into a vector here basically. Now imagine we wanted to actually go from A now to B. Well we already know that from O to A is called vector OA, or just A, position vector of A. And if we want to get to B, instead of going directly, if we didn't know it, if we knew the coordinates of B, we could go that way and just start at A and take any route we want to ends in B. So back along there, which is minus A, and then up here, which would be B. 
position vector of B. I'll write that in as that is B. So in other words, we could say that A to B is equal A to O plus O to B. But A to O is just minus O to A because it's just the opposite direction here, plus O to B. And that equals minus A plus B. So we get a new formula, just rearranging that. A, B, big thing here is B minus A. Position vector B minus position vector A. So if we know the coordinates of B and A, we're good to go to find A to B. Okay, an example with position vectors. P is a point 0.5 minus 6, 9. Q is 3, 2, 5. Find P to Q. So part A, P to Q is the position vector Q minus the position vector P. So Q is 3, 2, and 5 minus P, which is 5 minus 6, 9. 3 minus 5 is minus 2. 2 minus minus 6 is 8. And 5 minus 9 is minus 4. So we've now found P to Q. As he's found the distance between P and Q, well, this is just the magnitude. So part B is just asking us for the magnitude of P to Q, which by Pythagoras is the square root of minus 2 squared plus 8 squared plus minus 4 squared. That gives me square root of 4 plus 64 plus 16. 64, 74, 80, the square root of 84. Now this could be a calculator or non-calculator. If it was calculated, we would work that out, but most of the time non-calculator. The square root of 84 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 21, which is 2 root 21 units. And we're done there. So we want to higher mass vectors. First thing we're going to look at is collinearity, which you have already seen in straight line. In straight line, we learned that for two lines to be collinear, it means that they are parallel and they have a point in common. Moving on to higher mass vectors, collinearity is the first one we're going to look at. For the straight line, we've already learned that word collinear. It actually means that two lines which are parallel, but they've got a point in common. So but from our knowledge of so starting looking at collinearity in terms of vectors, remember from straight line, the word collinear told us that if you've got two line segments, AB and BC, say, if the gradient of them are equal, it means AB and BC are parallel. But since they've got a point in common, it actually means they're on a straight line, and that's what collinearity means, that three points are on a straight line. Let's look at that in terms of vectors, right? So we could have a vector, which is just a line segment. So if we had a vector, say, like this, and that was A to B, and then we had another vector starting at B and going somewhere else to C. Well, clearly they're not collinear because they're not lining up, right? So they're not parallel. So A to B, we could say, is not parallel for to B to C, even though, the, the, even though that B is a common point. They just don't line up. Or we could have another option where we've got two vectors, let's say A to B, drawn, and then we could have another vector drawn next to it called C to D. And you should be able to see that these two, I'm trying to draw them, is parallel. So A to B is parallel to C to D, but there's no common points, so they're not called any other, they're just parallel. So for collinearity to happen, what we want is a vector that goes from A to B and then B to C continues on that same straight line and B to C. So we can observe that vector A to B is parallel to vector B to C, but B is a common point and therefore a, B, C, R, linear. Now, it's worth noting in the vectors, what do we mean by a parallel vector? Let's look at parallel vectors. Parallel vectors just means they're going in the same direction, but the size does not act. Parallel vectors, same direction, but magnitude 
should be different. So what does that mean? It means that let's say we take a vector like u is equal to 8 minus 2, 0 again, and v was equal to 16 minus 4, 0. Question becomes, are they parallel? Well, the magnitude is clearly different, but is one a multiple of the other? Because one's a multiple of the other, it means they're going in the same direction. So we can say that v is clearly 2 times 8 minus 2, 0, which is 2 times u. So v is just double the size of u, but in the same direction, and therefore u and v are parallel. Let's take another example. Let's say we had vector a was equal to 12 minus 3, 9. And vector b was equal to 20 minus 5, 15. And we wanted to know, are these vectors parallel or not? Well, we need to see if we're both times by the same number. There was two ways to do this. You can examine the ratio between each of these numbers and see if you get the same ratio. So let's do it both ways. Examining the ratio, so looking at ratio, we get 20 over 12 for the x parts. We get minus 5 over minus 3 for the y parts. And we get 15 over 9 for the z parts. And we can simplify each of them. <coughs> Dividing the first one by 4, that gives me 5 over 4 threes is 12. A minus divided by a minus is a plus, so that's still 5 threes. And 5 goes into 15, 3 goes into 15 5 times, and 3 goes into 3 9. Common ratio. And therefore, parallel. So that's one way you could check for parallel. The other way would be to simplify the vectors. So let's look at A. A was equal to 12 minus 3 and 9. Well, the, the common factor between 12 minus 3 and 9 is 3. So dividing through by 3, we get 4 minus 1 and 3. So there's A. And then B was equal to 20 minus 5 and 15. Dividing through by 5 then, you get 4 minus 1 and 3. So therefore, since both vectors are just a multiple of, of the same vector, A and B are parallel. So that's another way you can check for two vectors being parallel. Look at some examples. So collinearity, example 1, A is a point 1 minus 2, 5, B is 8 minus 5, 9, and C is 22 minus 11, 17. We have to show that A, B, C are collinear. So we need to show that a to B is equal to B to C, or some multiple of it. So let's just start there. So working out A to B, remember that's the position vector B minus 8. So that's 8 minus 5, 9. Take away 1 minus 2, 5. That gives me 7 minus 5 plus 2 is minus 3. 9 minus 5 is 4. So what to A to B, now we can work out B to C. Remember that's C minus B then. So 22 minus 11, 17. Take away 8 minus 5, 9. 22 minus 8 is 14. Minus 11 plus 5 is minus 6. 17 minus 9 is 8. So they're clearly not the same, but they might be multiples of each other. So we need a little statement. So we can say that a to b, working out what that multiple is, just have a look. 2 7s is 14, 2 3s is 6, 2 4s is 8, is equal to a half of b to c. Or if you prefer, b to c is 2 lots of a to b. It makes no difference. And that means you can then just say, Straight away, therefore, AB and BC, the line segments, are parallel. But B is a common point. So I always say that B is a common point. So A, B, and C are collinear.
And that's how you get your marks. Part B says, find the ratio in which B divides A to C. Now, some people find that difficult. Let's just go straight into that one. Find the ratio that B divides A to C. So we've got A to B, we already know, is equal to a half of B to C. So it's usually handy to just think of this in terms of ratios, fractions, right? That means that A to B over B to C must equal one half. Now, A to B over B to C is a ratio. It's a fraction, a ratio. So we can write that in ratio form. So that means that A to B ratioed with B to C, the ratio of A to B to B to C equals the ratio of 1 to 2. This is find the ratio in which B divides A to C, A, B, B, C, A to C. Now, you can also think of this pictorially if you prefer. Let's just imagine a picture. We have got A to some point B to some point C. And we know that the length of A to B is one half of the length of B to C. So thinking about that in terms of fractions, if that is one half, then I've got two halves, three halves. So that divides it into three parts. So I must have one part here and two parts there because that part's double this part. So it's one to two. Okay. Collinearity example two. D, E and F have coordinates. 10 minus 8 minus 15, 1 minus 2 minus 3, and minus 14, 8, 17. Show that D, E, F are collinear. Same question. Then find the ratio of E divides V to F. So I need to find D to E, E to F, and the ratio there. So let's start off with part A. We want to work out D to E. So that is E minus D. 1 minus 2 minus 3, take away 10, minus 8 minus 15. 1 minus 10 is nine, minus 9, minus 2 plus 8 is 6, and minus 3 plus 15, 15 minus 3 is 12. So there's my first one, and then we're going to do e to f, which is f minus e, because we want the common point. So that is minus 14, 8, 17. Take away 1 minus 2 minus 3. That gives me minus 14. Take away 1 is minus 15. 8 plus 2 is 10. 17 plus 3 is 20. So now we need to check, is, are they multiples of each other? <clears throat> So there's two ways to do that, remember? We can just check the ratio between each of the x's, each of the y's, or each of the z's, or just simplify both. This way, this time, I'm just going to simplify both. So I've got d to e is equal to, well, I can divide by 3, because 9, 6, and 12. So 3 lots of minus 3. 3 twos is 6. And 3 fours is 12. And then I've got ETF. Five goes into both of them. Five threes is 15, five twos is 10, five fours is 20. So I can say that looking at these numbers, three DTE equals five ETF. 3d to e equals 5e to f. Or oh, in terms of fractions. So we can say that d to e is equal to 3 fifths of, of e to f. Now if you don't like that method, the alternative is 
Just compare fractions. 9 over 15, simplify. 6 over 10, simplify. 12 over 20, simplify. Check that each of these fractions is the same, which it is. It's 3 fifths. And therefore, you can then say the same thing, that the E is 3 fifths of EF. And so, DE and EF are parallel. But E is a common point. So D, E, and F are collinear. Okay, moving on to part B. So find the ratio of E divides DTF. Well, I've already done the work and got three fifths as a number. So for part B, it's really easy. Once you know it's three fifths, you just say that DTE divided by ETF is equal to three fifths. So DTE divided by ETF is a ratio. DTE to ETF is 3 to 5. So the ratio that E divides DE and EF is 3 to 5. And we're done there. Let's look at a concrete example of dividing lines in a given ratio. P is the point minus 2, 4, minus 1, and R is 8, minus 1, 19. The point T divides PR in the ratio 2 to 3. Find the coordinates of T. So we know that the ratio of P to T and T to R is 2 to 3. So that's your starting position. So that means that PT divided by TR is 2 thirds. So we can say that 3 PT must equal to t to r. Now we try to find the coordinates of t, but we know p to t can be written as t minus p. So that gives me three lots of t minus p equals two lots of r minus t. And then that allows us to so, um, collect like terms. Because we can just multiply the brackets out, 3t minus 3p equals 2r minus 2t. Taking the t's over to the left, that gives me 5t equals 2r plus 3p. But we already know r and p, remember, in the question. r is there and p is there. So that is 2 lots of r, which is 8 minus 119. plus three lots of P, which is minus two, four, minus one. That's five T, yeah? So working them out, <clears throat> that gives me 16 minus two and 38, plus minus six, 12 minus three. That's five T. So five T equals 16 minus six is 10. Minus 2 plus 12 is 10. 38 minus 3 is 35. So dividing through by 5, t must equal 5, 2, 2 and 7. So that means that without any extra work, the coordinate of t is 2, 2, 7. And we're done there. Okay, what is a unit vector? A unit vector is a vector where the magnitude is 1. Any vector where the magnitude is 1 is a unit vector. So let's say we had this vector u, which is root 3 over 2, 0 and a half. We want to know, is that a unit vector or not? Well, let's sort of work out the size of u. So the size of u, remember, is Pythagoras. So the square root of all the numbers squared and added together. So root 3 over 2 squared plus 0 squared plus a half squared. Well, that equals the square root of root 3 squared is 3, 2 squared is 4, so that's 3 quarters, plus 0, a half times a half is a quarter. 3 quarters plus a quarter is 4 quarters, which is equal to 1. So the square root of 1, which is 1, so the size of u equals 1, so u is a unit vector. So what's a unit vector? So a unit vector basically is if you a, a quick example on unit vectors, find the components of a unit vector u, which is parallel to vector v, if v is 3, 4. So let's look at the size of v, and the size of u we know is 1. 
but it's the same as, as parallel, so it's going in the same direction. So if we consider u, if we consider v here, there's v, it goes, it goes along 3 and up 4, so the size of v is the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, 25, which is 5. So we know the size of v is 5, we know the size of u is equal to 1, and therefore u must be one fifth of v because they're parallel. That's a fifth of the vector 3, 4, which is just 3 fifths, 4 fifths. And we're done there. So let's look at unit vector form. We've previously studied that translating the vector 2 in the x direction, 7 in the y, and 3 in the z can be achieved by using the vector 2, 7, and 3. Okay, and over is vector p, then o to p is equal to 2, 7, 3. Now let's look at the base units and make some definitions here. We're going to let i equal to 1, 0, 0. So that's the base unit vector in the x direction. In other words, if we times this by 2, which is the x component OP, it would move this, it would make this 2, but it will be 0. So base unit vector in the x direction. You can do the same for y and z, just by changing out the y and z numbers to 1. We're going to call that j is equal to 0, 1, 0. Base unit vector in the y direction. And k we're going to call 0, 0, 1. And it's a base unit vector in the z direction. So what do we mean by that? If we look at a coordinate grid, let's, have, let's say we had z up here, y going into our page, and x going along here. Then, using different colours, if we look at 1, 0, 0, that means we go along 1, 0, 0. So this vector from the origin is called i. And going up the y direction, if we go along the y direction just 1, but we've not moved along the x or the z direction, then we call this vector j, 0, 1, 0. And similarly, if we go up just the z direction by one unit, but we've not moved along the x and y, then the vector 0 to, to what? We call that vector k. So looking back at our original OP, we know that OP is equivalent to 2 lots of i, 7 lots of j, because 7 times the 1, and 3 lots of k. So we can say that in component form, OP is 2, 7, 3. That's called component form. But in unit vector form, OP equals 2 lots of 1, 0, 0, plus 7 lots of 0, 1, 0, plus 3 lots of 0, 0, 1, which equals 2i plus 7j plus 3k. And we call this form unit vector form. So we can generalize any vector to unit vector form. <clears throat> if we just take any old vector x, y, z, then in unit vector form, it would just be x, i times y, j times z, k. So let's have a task of converting vectors in component form in unit vector form and vice versa. So let's just quickly do these. 3, 7, 9, very easy. It's 3i plus 7j plus 9k. Similarly, this one would be 7i in unit vector form minus 4j minus 5k. 
and this one would be minus 2i plus no j plus 10k. Now when you've got 0j, you can just leave it out. So going backwards, this would be minus 9, 6 and 4. This one would be 12, 1j minus 1k. And this one here, well, be careful now, there's no i, so 0 I need, 6j and minus 2k. Uh, dot product for vectors. The dot product can be thought of as directional multiplication for vectors. Multiplying two vectors means we are multiplying the direction of the growth of one vector with another. The result is how much stronger we have made the original vector, basically. The final result of a dot process can be zero, so no, no, no change in the original direction of the vector, or positive, some growth in the original direction of the vector, or negative, the reverse growth it can get smaller. The dot product or scalar product is denoted a dot b and can be calculated as follows. From a normal rectangular perspective, in other words, using the components, a dot b is just a times 1 times b1 plus a2 times b2 plus a3 times b3. So you just take each of the components and times them together and add all your results up. In the what we call a polar perspective, um, you can think of it as the angle in between. A dot B is the size of A, and the size of B, the magnitude of both of them, times cos theta. And we'll use both of these in examples, and you're given these in the start of the exam paper to work it out. Example one, the dot product, given it P dot Q. Find P dot Q, given it vector P is 1, 2, minus 3, and Q is 2, 2, 3. So P dot Q just equals 1 times 2 plus 2 times 2 plus minus 3 times 3. So that is equal to 2 plus 4. Minus 3 times 3 is minus 9. So 2 plus 4 is 6. Take away 9 is minus 3. And we're done there. Example 2 in the dot product. A is 2, 3, 9. B is 1, 4, minus 2. And C is 1, minus 1, 3, minus 6. Find AD dot BC. So we need to find A to B first. Remember that's the position vector b minus a. So that is 1, 4, minus 2. Take away 2, 3, and 9. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. And then we've got 4 minus 3, which is 1. And minus 2 minus 9 is minus 11. And now we need to do a to c. That's c minus a. So that is minus 1, 3, minus 6. Take away... 2, 3, 9. So notice we're not using B at all. And A to C. Minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. And minus 6 minus 9 is minus 15. So A to B dot A to C is equal to minus 1, 1 minus 11 dot minus 3, 0 minus 15. Minus 1 times minus 3 is 3. I'll write it out actually. Minus 1 times minus 3 plus 1 times 0 plus minus 11 times minus 15. That gives us 3 plus 0. 10, 15 is 150, so that's 165. So 3 and 165 is 168. And we're done there. Okay, looking at the dot product from... Polar perspective, polar form of a vector is something you would learn in advance. How you don't need to know anything about it today. You just need to know that the formula for finding a dot b is the size of a times the size of b times the cos of theta. Now we could prove it, and it's not that difficult to prove, but we'll just leave it as a formula and you get it in the formula sheet. So let's jump into an example. So we've got example one, vectors a and b have magnitudes 7 and 3 and at an angle of 60 degrees to each other. What's the value of a dot b? So a dot b from the start of the formula sheet is the size of a times the size of b times the cos of theta. So size of a is given as 7 times 3 times the cos of 60, which is an exact value. So let's just revise our exact values a little bit here. Little triangle for us, 60 degrees, 30 is up here. That gives us 2, half of 2 is 1, square root 3 from Pythagoras. So the cos of 60 is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is a half. So that gives me 7 times 3 
times one half. Seven times three is 21, times a half, 21 over two units. And you can just leave your answer as 21 over two because that's a simplified fraction and we're done there. We dot product example two with angles. Vectors A and B have magnitudes seven and three and at an angle of 60 degrees to each other is shown. What's the value of A dot B? Well, this is a trick question because usually the vectors go that way and that way with the angle in between starting at this position out and out and we've got one that starts and goes in and one that starts and goes out so be very very careful with this one we need to work this out so if i extend this vector this way i could have a getting attached there so let me just draw that out at the side there's b that's fine but i don't want a starting over here and going there i want a starting there and going there so i need to draw that in so i'll draw my a from here and the question we need to ask ourselves is, what is this angle if that is 60? Now, it's hard to see if I don't extend the line. So let me put a, dot, a dotted line in. That was originally 60. Angles on, an, on a straight line add up to 180. So my angle is actually 120 degrees. So we've got 7 and 3. So A dot B is equal to the size of A times the size of B times the cos of 120. And sometimes you're having to work out size of A and B yourself if you're given it in component form, depending on what they're giving you. So that gives us seven times three times the cos of 120. So what's the cos of 120? Well, let's have a look at a cast diagram because it's not an exact value, but it's a related angle because it's above 90, but 120 is here. Now, I'll just write that here. To get this angle, we do 180 minus theta, where theta is here. So that means theta must be 60 degrees, because 180 minus 60 is 120. So it's related to cos of 60, which we already know is a half from the previous example. But in case you've just jumped in, there's a right angle triangle. There's 60, that's 2, 1, and root 3. Opposite, adjacent over hypotenuse is a half. So the cos of 60 is a half, but in this quadrant where cos is negative, because we've got S here, it is negative. So that means that it's minus a half. So it's just seven times three times minus a half, which is minus 21 over two. Perpendicular vectors. Remember what perpendicular means at the right angles. So we've got just two vectors drawn, no numbers, no nothing. What is, this si what is A dot B? That might think, well, we can't know because we don't know the size of A and the size of B. But we do know the cos of theta because we know the angle. So we call this as theta is 90. So that's the size of A times the size of B times the cos of 90. And what is the cos of 90? Well, let's just check with a, a graph. If I draw the standard cos graph, it goes 1 and minus 1. And it goes 90, 180, 270, 360. You can see... At 90, it is 0. So the cos of 90 is 0, so that gives A times B times 0. Anything times 0 is 0. So for perpendicular vectors, A dot B equals 0. That is there. If A and B are perpendicular, then A dot B is 0. Or conversely, if A dot B equals 0, then A and B are perpendicular. Okay, example 1. Two vectors are defined as A equal to 4i plus 2j minus 5k. B is 2i plus j plus 2k. So remember that's unit vector form. Show that A and B are perpendicular. So we need to work out A dot B. So we can change them if it helps us into 4, 2, minus 5. Some people can just do it directly without doing this. 2, 1, and 2. So that is 4 times 2 plus 2 times 1 plus minus 5 times 2. That gives me 8 plus 2 minus 10, which equals 0. So since A dot B equals 0, A and B are perpendicular. Example 2. P to Q equals 4A7 and RTS equals 2 minus 3A where A is a constant, some number. Given that P, P to Q and RTS are perpendicular, find the value of A. So since P to Q and RTS are perpendicular, it 
ptq.rts must equal zero. So that ptq.rts equals 4a7 dot 2 minus 3 and a. So that gives me 4 times 2 plus a times minus 3 plus 7 times a. That's 8 minus 3a plus 7a equals 0. So now, collecting terms, 8, 7 minus 3 is 4, plus 4a equals 0. So 4a must be minus 8. So a must be minus 2, minus 8 divided by 4. And we're done there. Okay, looking at the angle between vectors using the dot product, we know the dot product from the start of the exam paper is a dot b equals the size a times the size of b times the cos of theta, where theta is the angle in between vectors a and b. So we can just rearrange this formula, just divide on the left hand side by size of a, size of b, will give us cos theta. So cos theta is a dot b over the size of a and the size of b. And when a dot b is obviously our standard a1, a b1, a2, b2, and a3, b3. So whenever you are given, <clears throat> asked to find the angle in between vectors, you're going to use this formula. Now you're not given this at the start of the exam paper, but you are given this formula. So you can rearrange it every time instead of having to memorise. Let's look at an example or two. So example one for the angle between vectors, calculate angle theta for vectors p equal to this and q equal to that. So from the start of the exam paper, p dot q, or a dot b, is equal to the size of p, size of q, times the cos of theta. So straight away I can write cos theta is equal to p dot q, all over the size of p and the size of q. So we need to work out the size of p and q and p dot q, which we already know how to do from previous work. So let's just do p dot q first, p dot q is equal to 3, 4, minus 2 dot 4, 1, 3. That equals 3 times 4, which is 12, 4 times 1, which is 4, plus 4, and minus 2 times 3 is minus 6. 12 plus 4 minus 6 is 10. So we know p dot q is 10, so the top of this bit is 10. Now we need the size of p and the size of q. So remember, this is p and this is q. So the size of p, Pythagoras, square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared plus negative 2 squared. That's the square root of 9 plus 16 plus 4. That's 25, 29. Now, we'll just leave it as simplified thirds. We're not going to simplify actually half the time because we're going to actually use a calculator. Size of Q is equal to the square root of 4 squared plus 1 squared plus 3 squared. That equals the square root of 16 plus 1 plus 9, which is root 26. So now we can do our question. Remember, cos theta is p dot q all over size p times the size of q. So p dot q was 10, so that's just 10 over root 29, root 26. Clearly not an exact value, so this is a calculator job. Theta is the inverse cos of 10 over root 29 times root 26. So we can do that all in a calculator in one go. So shift cos. 10 divided by root 29 times root 26, close my brackets, 68.6 degrees. Now the question you might be asking yourself at this point is, do I need to use a cast diagram? And the answer is no, because it's an acute angle which is between two vectors because they're just straight lines off each other. So you don't need to use a cast diagram for this. Angle between vectors, example two. K is a point one minus seven two, L is minus three three four, and M is two five one. Find K L M with an angle sign. So the size of find angle K L M. So drawing this out is quite handy. We've got L in the middle, 
So let's just put L here. And then that's going to go to K. And it's going to go to M if we want the size of the angle feet in between. So we're going to need L to K and L to M. So let's work out L to K first. K minus L. K is 1 minus 7, 2. And L is minus 3, 3, 4. 1 minus minus 3 is 4. Minus 7 minus 3 is minus 10. 2 minus 4 is minus 2. And then we're going to need L to M. So that's M minus L. So that's 2, 5, 1. Minus, minus 3, 3, 4. 2 minus minus 3 is 5. 5 minus 3 is 2. 1 minus 4 is minus 3. So we'll get 5, 2 minus 3 for our next one. So just to remember what we're trying to do here. Try to find the size of the angle. So remember A dot B equals the size of A, size of B, cos theta. So that means that cos theta equals A dot B all over size of A, size of B. So using the same letters as this, that's L to, L to K dot L to M on the top. So we're going to have cos theta for this question equals L to K dot L to M over the size of L to K times the size of L to M. So let's work out our dot product, L to K dot L to M. L to K dot L to M. We've got our vectors up here. L to K is 4 minus 10 minus 2. Dot our other one, L to M, was 5, 2 minus 3. 4 times 5 is 20. Minus 10 times 2 is minus 20. And minus 2 times minus 3 is plus 6. So that gives us an answer of just 6. So now for our sizes, size of L to K is equal to the square root of, remember, just the number squared. 4 squared plus minus 10 squared plus minus 2 squared. That equals the square root of 16 plus 100 plus 4, which is 120. Now, no need to simplify that because you're going to use a calculator anyway, so we'll just move on to the size of L to M. That's going to be the square root of 5 squared plus 2 squared plus minus 3 squared. That's the square root of 25 plus 4 plus 9. That is the square root of 25, 34, 38, I think. So that means that finally, cos theta equals our 6 over the square root of 120 times the square root of 38. So theta is the inverse cos of all of that. And we can work that out in a calculator nice and easily. Shift cos, shift cos, 6 divided by the square root of 120 times the square root of 38 is 84.9 degrees. So theta equals 84.9 degrees. And we're done there. Okay, some properties of a scalar product. It is commutative. What does commutative mean in maths? It means that a dot b or a times b equals b times a. Not, not true for everything that you'll learn later in maths, but it is for the scalar product. Uh, since the angle in between a and b is theta, and the angle in between b and a is minus theta, that means that cos theta does equal cos of minus theta. It's worth knowing that cos theta does equal cos of minus theta. Or a1, b1, a2, b2, a3, b3 can be written the opposite way, b1, a1, b2, a2, b3, a3. It's distributive. Distributive is when the multiplying brackets works. So a dot b plus c does equal a dot b plus a dot c. So you can expand brackets in the normal way with it as well. Uh, this one is, is the big one which is worth knowing, and the scalar product and the scalar product of a vector in itself is just a positive real number as long as a doesn't equal zero, 
So that means that a dot a is just the size of a squared. Now we can show that because if you've got a dot a, that's the size of a size of a cos theta. So that's size of a size of a times, well, the angle in between it and a, a, a vector in itself is nothing. There's, there's no angle. So it's cos zero. The cos of zero is one. So using a graph to see that, one up here. So that's the size of a times the size of a times one. So a dot a is just equal to the size of a squared. Now let's look at a couple of examples using these properties. So properties of scale product example one, calculate p dot q plus r when the size of p is three and the size of q is four, the size of r is two. And the vectors are arranged in the diagram as shown. Let me just neaten up this diagram for us before we begin. So we can see that the angle in between p and r is 45, the angle in between r and q is 15 and so on. But let's just expand this and see where we go. So we've got p dot q plus r, expanding brackets in the normal way, p dot q we need to work out, plus p dot r. So can we work out p dot q? Well, p dot q is the size of p times the size of q times the cos of the angle in between, plus the p dot r is the size of p times the size of r, times the cos of the angle in between their ones. Let's call that theta and theta, but really we should use maybe different angle symbols. Let's call that, let's change that to uh, an A, because I can't be bored thinking about another Greek letter at this time of the night. So size of P times the size of Q. So we've got three times four, cos of the angle in between P and Q. Well, P and Q, 45 and 15 is 60, cos 60, plus P times size of p times the size of r, that's 3 times 2, times the cos of the angle in between p and r is just 45 degrees. So we've got some exact values to work out, so let's do our triangles. There's 60 degrees to 1 in root 3, and there's 45 degrees, and that's just 1, 1 in root 2. So that will help us. So bringing this down here, 3 fours is 12, times the cos of 60, is a half plus 3 twos is 6 times the cos of 45 is 1 over root 2. So that gives me 6 plus 6 over root 2. Now we can't leave it like that. So let's put that over 1 and common denominator is root 2. That will give me 6 times root 2 on the top plus 6. 6 root 2 plus 6 over root 2. Now we could rationalise the denominator, so times by root 2 over root 2, and that will give me 6 root 2 plus 6 times root 2 all over 2. Expanding the bracket, 6 root 2 times root 2 is just 6 times 2, which is 12, plus 6 root 2 all over 2. Dividing through by 2 then, we get 12 divided by 2 is 6, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 6 plus 3, root 2. And we're done there. Example 2. In the diagram below, size of A equals size of C equals 2, and size of B is 2 root 3, and then we've got 30 degrees here. Let's calculate A dot A plus B plus C. So 30 plus 30 is 60. 180 minus 60 gives me 120 here. So that gives me A dot A plus A dot B plus a dot c, that equals the size of a squared, plus size of a, size of b, times the cos of, where well, the cos of angle between a and b is 30 degrees, plus the size of a, times the size of c, times the cos of the angle in between a and c. Well, this is the trick where we extend this line up, so that a can be written here, and then we've got it starting and going out, so that's 60 degrees. So just watch out for that. It has to start along and along. So that is 60. So that gives us the size of A, which is 2 squared, plus 2 times 2 root 3 times the cos of 30. If you don't know, 60, 30, 2, 1, root 3. So 30 is root 3 over 2 plus 2 times 2 times 60 is a half. That gives me 4 plus 2 twos is 4. 
4 root 3 times root 3 is just 4 times 3, which is 12, over 2, which is 6. Take your time working that out if you have to. 2 times is 4, divided by 2 is 2. 4 plus 6 is 10, plus 2 is 12. And we're done there. Let's look at some past paper questions on vectors. I'll give you the whole past papers if you want, and then we'll be done with vectors for hire. SQ High Maths 2015, paper 2, question 6. Vectors, vectors P, Q and R are represented in the diagram below. It's a parallelogram and ABE is an equilateral triangle. And it says the size of P is 3 and the angle ABC is 90. And we can see all that in the diagram. So let's jump in and see what it's actually asking us about this question. Evaluate P dot Q plus R. So we can just expand that to say part A. P dot Q plus R is equal to P dot Q plus P dot R. Now, the start exam paper tells us that it's A dot B is si size of A times the size of B times the cost of the angle in between. So we can see that that is size of P, size of Q, cost of the angle in between, plus the size of P times the size of R times the cost of the angle in between. So let's look at the size of P and the size of Q, where it says the size of P is 3, let me just take a note of that, which means all of these are 3, obviously, because it's an equal triangle. So size of P and the size of Q, that's 3 times 3, times the cost of the angle in between those, where it's an equilateral triangle, so these are 60 degree angles. So we can write 60 degrees for each of them, so it's the cost of 60, plus the size of P again, which is 3 times the size of R, and then the angle in between, cos of, well, what's the angle in between P and R? Well, let's have a look. It goes along P, and then R is perpendicular to it, so that's a 90 degree angle. So it's the cos of 90. Well, that is handy. Perpendicular, the cos of 90 is equal to zero. So if two vectors are perpendicular to each other, then this a dot B equals zero for them. So that's great. So now we've got the cost of 60 to work out with our own calculator. So remember, we've got 60 degrees down here, 30 up here. If that was two, this would be one and that would be root three. So the cost of 60 is a half. So that equals three times three times a half, plus three times the size of R times zero. Three threes are nine times a half is nine halves, plus nothing is nothing. So we get nine halves. Question B says express E to C in terms of P, Q and R. So let's go back to our diagram and see where E to C is. We want to go from here all the way over to here. Now, we can't go this way because I don't know what this is. So I'm going to go the other way. So I'm going to go E to A, that's minus Q. And then I'm going to go along here, that's plus P. And then straight up here, well, that's parallel to R. And it's the same size, so it is R. So we've got minus Q plus P plus R. So I just need to write that down. Part B, E to C equals minus Q plus P plus R. Little lines underneath these because they're vectors, but that's fine if you miss that. He says, Given that a to e dot e to c is 9 root 3 minus 9 halves, find the size of r. Well, wh where's a to e? So a to e is here. So let me just write this out first. We've got a to e dot e to c. Well, we know that a to e is q dot, and e to c is what we just found out in part b. So we can just write that down, minus q plus p plus r. And we can then just expand this and see what we get. So that equals minus q dot q plus q dot p plus q dot r. So then using our formula of q dot q is the size of q times the size of q times the cost of the angle in between, that gives us minus size q, size q, Cos, well, the angle in between this is a vector which is the same. Well, but imagine my pen's a vector, there's, the other, there's no angle, so zero. Cos is zero. 
plus the size of Q, size of P. And um, we actually already did that before, it's cost 60. Plus the size of Q, size of R. And cost... So we'll go back up to the diagram and try and find the angle in between Q and R. If I draw R here, say, and Q there, then you've got R and Q. And if you look at this diagram here, there's my Q there, and I've just moved my R there. You should be able to see that this angle here is 30, because 60 plus 30 is 90. So that's a 30 degree angle. So back down here, we've got the cost of 30. Okay, so what does that mean? So we've got the size of Q times the size of Q. The size of Q is 3. So that equals minus 3 times 3 times, and the cost of 0 is 1. Plus, size of Q, size of P, 3 times 3, times the cost of 60, we know is a half already. Plus, the size of Q, which is 3, times the size of R, and the cost of 30 is root 3 over 2. But the question tells us that all of that equals 9 root 3 minus 9 over 2. So just keeping that in mind. So let's just try and tidy this up. We've got minus 3 times 3 is 9 times 1. So that's minus 9 plus 9 over 2 plus 3 root 3 over 2 times the size of r equals 9 root 3 minus 9 over 2. We're moving everything over to the right hand side. That means we've got 3 root 3 over 2 times r equals 9 root 3 minus 9 over 2. And then <coughs> minus another 9 over 2 plus 9. So that means 3 root 3 over 2r equals, well, let's just have a look at that, minus 9 over 2 minus 9 over 2 is minus 18 over 2. 18 over 2 is 9, so that's just minus 9 plus 9, which is 0. So all that's gone, so we've just got 9 root 3. So now we can just times both sides by 2 to get size of r times 3 root 3 equals 9 times 2 is 18 root 3. So the size of r is 18 root 3 divided by 3 root 3. So that means that the root 3 is cancelled, leaving 18 divided by 3. 3 sixes is 18, so the size of r is 6. And we're done there. It's great. Hi, maths. 2016 paper 1 question 7 on vectors. Three vectors are expressed as follows. I'm not going to read them out, but it then says find f to h and then find f to e. So we get a handle of what this question is asking us. If I draw a little picture, let's just call this F. I'm going up to G first. So there's G. And then it goes G to H. So let's just call that H. And then it goes H E to H. Well, I could go H to E then and just go the other way around. So E to H. And then we could kind of complete the picture, I suppose, by saying that there's going to be a vector there. That's going to be my F to E. I have to find that one. So that's part B, say. And I have to find F to H, which is along the middle, so that's my part A. So we know, remember, all the solid lines. So, for part A, F to H is equal to, let's just trace this out to make sure we don't make any mistakes. I want to get from F to H, so I just go F to G plus G to H. F to G plus G to H. Now I find writing... The vectors in this form are easier, so f to g is minus 2, minus 6, 3, plus g to h is 3, 9, minus 7. Adding them together, minus 2 plus 3 is 1. Minus 6 plus 9 is 3, and then 3 take away 7 is minus 4. So we get 1, 3, minus 4. Uh, just writing that in the same format as the question, that's i plus 3j minus 4k, and we're done there. Part b, find f to e, so we want to get from here to here, we can't go that way, 
So we can go any way we want, remember. So we can just go that to that and then that, but we might as well just go straight across now because we know that and then go down. So it's F to H plus H to E. F to H plus H to E. Well, we know F to H, we just did it. One, three, minus four. Plus H to E, well, it tells us E to H. So H to E is just the minus of that. So it's minus two, minus three, minus one. Minus two, minus three, minus one. One minus two is minus one. Three plus minus three is zero. And minus four plus minus one is minus five. Or writing that out, minus i, minus 5j. Okay, I want that there. Let's go ahead, Maths 2017, paper 2, question 5 on vectors. Express p to q in terms of i, j, k. So we want to go from p to q. I can't get there directly, but do we know p to r? Yes, we do. And do we know r to q? Yes, we do. So we can just add them together. So for part a, p to q is equal to p to r plus r to q. So p to r is 952, 9, 5 and 2, plus r to q is minus 12, minus 9, 3. Adding them together, 9 minus 12 is minus 3, 5 minus 9 is minus 4, and 2 plus 3 is 5. And we're done there. Now writing it in terms of i, j, k, that's minus 3i minus 4j plus 5k. Part B. The point S divides qr in the ratio of 1 to 2. So let's look what qr is. So 1 to 2, there's 1, there's 2, clearly that's a bigger part. And it says, show that ps is equal to this. So we want to go from p to s. So we can go p to r plus 2 thirds of the way along r to q. So let me just write that down. p to s is equal to p to r plus two thirds of the way along r to q. So p to r was 9, 5, 2 plus two thirds of minus 12, minus 9, 3. So that gives me 9, 5 and 2 plus 12 divided by 3 is 4 times 2 is 8, so minus 8. 9 divided by 3 is 3 times 2 is 6, so minus 6. 3 divided by 3 is 1, times 2 is 2. So we get 9 minus 8 is 1, 5 minus 6 is minus 1, 2 plus 2 is 4. So that equals i minus j plus 4k, as required. Question 5c, hence find the size of angle QPS. So QPS, that's that one here, so we need p to q dot p to s, and it's the size of the angle in between, because to start with example, it says a dot b was the size of a times the size of b times the cos of theta. So let's just take a note of that, a dot b, size of a, size of b, cos theta. So we need this a dot b, and we need the size of a and the size of b. But a was just our first vector, and b is our second vector. So the size of, let's do p to q dot PTS first. So we just times each component together. Minus 3 times 1 is minus 3. Plus minus 4 times minus 1 is 4. Plus 5 times 4, which is 20. So adding all that together, we get 21. So now we need the size of P to Q and the size of PTS. Size of p to q, remember that's just like Pythagoras, so it's just the square root of minus 3 squared plus minus 4 squared plus 5 squared. Well, that's 9 plus 16 is 25, plus 25 is 50, so root 50. No need to simplify because you're just going to use it in the formula. Only simplify at the end if you have to. Size of pts, square root then of... 1 squared plus minus 1 squared plus 4 squared. That's 1 plus 1 plus 16 is 18. 18. So that means that we can work out our cos theta now. Because our cos theta is just going to be a dot b, so this, divided by 
base 2, which is base 2. Nothing to work out, just do it, put, write it. So we've just got 21 over root 50 root 18. So that means that theta is the inverse cos of all that. 21 root 50 times root 18. Getting a calculator for that bit. Shift cos 21 divided by, I'll put a bracket just to be on the safe side, root 50 times root 18, close the brackets, 45.57 or 45.6 degrees to one decimal place. And we're done there. SB Hammer 2018, people, one question nine on vector pathways. It shows us a triangular prism and it tells us some of the vectors. It says A to B is T, A to C is U, and A to B is V. Express B to C in terms of U and T. So I want to get from B to C, so I can go down this route, minus T, and then along here, plus U. Job done. B to C equals minus T plus U. And we're done there. Let's do part B. M is the midpoint of B to C. Express M to D in terms of T, U, and V. So we're wanting to go from M, which is here, all the way over to D, and we need to see a pathway we can take. So we could go down here, along there, and up here. So I suppose we need to work out what M to C is. So let's do that. M to C is equal to a half of B to C, which is equal to a half of minus T plus U. So now we know that, then M to D is simply looking at our root, a half of minus T plus U. And then once we've done that, we go minus U plus V. Minus U plus V. Simplifying that, that's all minus a half T plus a half U minus U plus V. That's minus a half t, a half u minus u is minus a half u, and then we've got plus v. Down there, just putting that old lines underneath. So usually that's how you write vectors of bold. SB High Maths 2019 Paper 2 Question 3 on vectors of vector pathways. It says E, A, B, C, D is a rectangular based pyramid. It tells you that A to B is P, as shown, A to D is Q, as shown there and e, A to E is R. And we have to express B to E in terms of P and R. So where's B to E? I need to start here and get up to there. So maybe we can take any direction you want. So I can just trace this. I go minus P. So I can write minus P. I've done minus P and I want to get all the way up to E. So I can go up R, so plus R. And that's it. It really is as simple as that. Point F divides BC in the ratio 3 to 1. Express the vector EF in terms of P, Q and R. So EF, just to be clear, is from here down to there. I want to get to there, but I need to go a path that I can actually use. So we could go along there, down there, and then back to there, and that will give me that. So let's just trace that out. I've got minus R plus P. So it's like that down to start with, minus R plus P. And then... Once I've done minus R plus P, I need to go along here. I know how far along am I going? Well, it says it divides it in the ratio 3 to 1. So if I imagine that this whole length is 4, I've went along 3 out of 4 bits. 3 quarters. And what is B to C's vector? Well, it's the same as this one because it's parallel. So it's 3 quarters of Q. So plus 3 quarters of Q. And we're done there. SQA Higher Maths 2015, paper 1, question 9. ABC are points such that AB is parallel to the line with equation y plus root 3x equals 0, and BC makes an angle of 150 degrees with the positive direction of the x axis. Are they collinear? So you need to know what collinear means. They are all in a straight line. So if you work out if A to B are parallel and B to C are parallel, and when it says B is a point in common, they would be in a straight line because they're parallel or not. So let's just work on this. So the first part is to work at the gradient of AB. So for A to B, 
we have got y equals minus root 3x. So the gradient of that section is just minus root 3. For b to c, well, gradient equals tan theta because we've got the angle 150 degrees. So our gradient is equal to the tan of 150. Now, 150 is uh, going to be an exact value. If you've got a cast diagram, we can see it's related to 180 minus 150. So if I work out the tan of 30, the tan of 30 degrees... is 1 over root 3, but 30 degrees is positive here and here, so that's 180 plus 30, which is 210, and that's 180 minus 30, which is 150. Here, tan is negative, so the tan of 150 is minus 1 over root 3. And then we can just make a little statement. Since the gradient of AB doesn't equal the gradient of BC, the points are not parallel. And so they're not collinear. Not parallel, so not collinear. Now, if they were equal, you would then say they are parallel, but since B is a common point, they're collinear. Next, we have Math 17, paper 2, question 10 on the equation of a circle. It says show that points A, B, and C are collinear. And then it says they're drawn inside a bigger circle, and it tells you some radiuses. You have to determine the equation of the bigger circle with center D. So let's tackle part A first collinearity. So for part A, we've got A is minus 7 minus 2, we've got B is 2, 1, and we've got C is 17, 6. So to show that three points are collinear, you just need to examine the gradients between A and B and B and C, and if they are the same, they are parallel, but we've got a common points of a collinear. So the gradients between A and B, that is 1 minus minus 2 over 2 minus minus 7, that is 3 over 9, which is a third. So we've got a gradient to A and B. Now the gradient to B and C. Well, that is 6 minus 1 on the top and 17 minus 2 on the bottom. That's 5 over 15. So that's a third. So I'll write a little statement. The gradient to A and B is equal to the gradient to B and C. So AB and BC are parallel. But B is a common point, so A, B, C are collinear. I want that there. Okay, let's tackle part B. It says the centers A, B, and C have the radiuses root 10 to A, R, A, and R, C is R, A plus R, B. Determine the equation of a circle with center D. So if the first one is root 10, the second one must be 2 root 10, because it's double the first one. And the third one is equal to the second one, the first one, which is root 10, plus the second one, which is 2 root 10. So that gives me 3 root 10 for my final radius. So we know let's just annotate this circle. We know that a is minus 7 minus 2. minus 7 minus 2, and we know that that is root 10. We know that B is 2, 1. And we know that this distance here is 2 root 10. That means it's the same on this side as well. And then C's point is 17, 6. But we know that C is now 3 root 10 from here to here. And for us to get the equation of a circle, we need two things. We need the radius of the circle and its centre. Well, do we know the radius? Well, let's just use a different colour. This distance here is also 3 root 10. 
So the radius from D all the way over to here is 3 root 10 plus 3 root 10, which is 6 root 10. So our radius, if I just write it at the side of the big circle, is 6 root 10. And now to get the center D, well, let's have a look. That's 2 root 10, and that's 3 root 10. So if we take this distance here, which is 5 root 10, D, we could say, is 2 fifths of the way along. 2 plus 3 is 5. So it's 2 fifths of the way up. So let's just write that down. D is 2 fifths of the way up BC. So then how do we get the centre? Well, it starts at 2 and it ends up at 17. So the difference between 2 and 17 is 15. 17 minus 2 equals 15. 2 fifths of 15 is 6. So if we were to draw a kind of right angle triangle here, we know that the, along the bottom is 15, but it has to go along 6 first and then along another 9, because it's 2 fifths away along. So 6 plus 2 is 8. So to get our centre, we've got 8. And then going up the way, so we know that that height is 5, so 2 fifths of 5. That small distance in here then would be 2. So I'm starting at 1 and going up 2, so that makes it 3. So we then get the point 8, 3. Hopefully that makes sense. So we've now got our centre and we've now got our radius. So for part B, our centre was equal to 8, 3. And our radius was equal to 6 root 10. So x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared, which is 6 root 10 all squared. Tidying that up, x minus a squared plus y minus 3 squared equals, well, this bit, 6 sixes is 36, root 10 squared is 10, it's 360. And we're done there. Hey, Scooby, hi, Math 2019, paper one, question five on vectors and collinearity. So it says show that the points A, B, and C are collinear, and then state the ratio at B divides A to C. So let's do part A first. To show that three points are collinear, especially 3D points, we can just compare A to B and vector B to C. So let's do A to B first. Vector is A to B, remember, is B minus A. So vector B is 4 minus 1 and 0 minus a, which is 1, 5, minus 3. So we've got 4 minus 1 on the top is 3, minus 1 minus 5 is minus 6, and 0 minus minus 3 is 3. So we get 3 minus 6 and 3 for the first. The next one, b to c. That's c minus b. So that is 8 minus 9 and 4. Take away 4 minus 1 and 0. So 8 minus 4 is 4, uh, minus 9 minus minus 1, well that's plus 1, so that's minus 8, and then the last one, 4 minus 0 is 4. Now to show that they are collinear, we need to show that these two vectors are parallel. How do we do that? Well, all you have to do is show that you can times 1 to get the other. So we, if we just compare each element in turn, we do that divided by that, that divided by that, and that divided by that, and make sure we get the same answer. So 4 divided by 3 is the first one. And then we've got minus 8 over minus 6. Well, if I simplify that, divide that by 2, you get 4 over 3. So that's the second element. And then the third element, 4 over 3 again. So we can then say quite easily that b to c is equal to 4 thirds of a to c. a to b, sorry. And therefore... BC and AB are parallel. You could have also done the numbers the other way around and said three quarters and said that A to B is three quarters of B to C and it would make no difference. But we've shown the parallel and therefore but B is a common point. As you can see, because you've got BC and AB. So you just say B is a common point and therefore a, B, and C are collinear. And we're done there.
Yes, we have asked 2016 paper 1 question 11. A and C are the points 1, 3, minus 2, 4, minus 3, 4, respectively. And it says the point B divides the AC in the ratio 1 to 2, find the coordinates of B. So we have got 1 to 2, and that is the point B dividing it in the ratio 1 to 2. So you can imagine a little picture to help with this. Imagine I've got point A here, and I've got point C at the end, and I've got some point B here, it divides it in the ratio 1 to 2, 1 to 2. So that means that the size of BC is double the size of AB. So that means that we can say that A to B, two of them, equals one of B to C. Well, from vectors A to B, that's a B minus A, that equals C minus B. Don't need that thing at the end. Expanding the brackets, we get 2B minus 2A equals C minus B. So taking the B over, we get 3B equals taking the A's over 2A plus C. So that means that B, of course, will be a third of 2A plus C. So let's find out what 2A is. Well, we know A is 1, 3, minus 2, so we can just write 3B equals 2 times 1, 3, minus 2, plus C, which was 4, minus 3, 4. So that equals 2, 6, minus 4, plus 4, minus 3, and 4, so we've got 3b is equal to 2 plus 4 is 6, 6 minus 3 is 3, and minus 4 plus 4 is 0. So b is that vector divided by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 0 divided by 3 is 0. And therefore the point b is equal to 2, 1, 0. And we're done for part a. Part B says k a to c is a vector of magnitude 1. Find the value of k. So if I know the size of a to c, then k must be the number which are times the size of that by to get the answer 1. So let's work out the size of a to c. So we already know a to c. Um, we can work out a to c. So for part B, a to c is c minus a. That equals 4 minus 3, 4. Take away 1, 3, minus 2. 4 minus 1 is 3. Minus 3, minus 3 is minus 6. And 4 minus minus 2 is 6. So we now know A to C. So the size of A to C is equal to Pythagoras, square root of 3 squared plus minus 6 squared plus 6 squared. So that gives me 9 plus 36 plus 36, which is 7281, which means the size of A to C equals 9, because the square root of 81 is 9. And remember, K times AC was a vector of magnitude 1. That just means K must equal 1 ninth, because a ninth times 9 is 1. And we're done there. It's great. Hi, Maths 2017, paper 2, question 5 on vectors. Express P to Q in terms of I, J, K. So we want to go from P to Q. I can't get there directly, but do we know P to R? Yes, we do. And do we know R to Q? Yes, we do. So we can just add them together. So for part A, P to Q is equal to P to R plus R to Q. So P to R is 9, 5, 2. 9, 5, and 2 plus r to q is minus 12 minus 9, 3. Adding them together, 9 minus 12 is minus 3. 5 minus 9 is minus 4. And 2 plus 3 is 5. And we're done there. We're writing it in terms of i, j, k. That's minus 3i minus 4j plus 5k. Part b. 
The point S divides QR in the ratio 1 to 2. So let's look where QR is. So 1 to 2, there's 1, there's 2, clearly that's a bigger part. And it says, show that PS is equal to this. So we want to go from P to S, so we can go P to R plus two thirds of the way along R to Q. So let me just write that down. P to S is equal to P to R plus two thirds of the way along R to Q. So P to R was 952 plus two thirds of minus 12 minus 9, 3. So that gives me 9, 5 and 2 plus 12 divided by 3 is 4 times 2 is 8, so minus 8. 9 divided by 3 is 3 times 2 is 6, so minus 6. 3 divided by 3 is 1 times 2 is 2. So we get 9 minus 8 is 1, 5 minus 6 is minus 1, 2 plus 2 is 4. So that equals i minus j plus 4k as required. Question 5c, hence find the size of angle QPS. So QPS, that's that one here. So we need P to Q dot P to S. And it's the size of the angle in between. Because to start with example, it says A dot B was the size of A times the size of B times the cos of theta. So let's just take a note of that. A dot B, size of A, size of B, cos theta. So we need this A dot B, and we need the size of A and the size of B. But A was just our first vector, and B is our second vector. So the size of, let's do P to Q dot P to S first. So we just times each component together. Minus 3 times 1 is minus 3, plus minus 4 times minus 1 is 4, plus 5 times 4, which is 20. So adding all that together, we get 21. So now we need the size of P to Q and the size of P to S. Size of P to Q, remember that's just like Pythagoras, so it's just the square root of minus 3 squared plus minus 4 squared plus 5 squared. Well, that's 9 plus 16 is 25, plus 25 is 50, so root 50. No need to simplify because you're just going to use it in the formula. Only simplify at the end if you have to. Size of PTS, square root then of 1 squared plus minus 1 squared plus 4 squared. That's 1 plus 1 plus 16 is 18. 18. So that means that we can work out our cos theta now. Because our cos theta is just going to be a dot b, so this, divided by these two, which is these two. Nothing to work out, just do it, put, write it. So we've just got 21 over root 50 root 18. So that means that theta is the inverse cos of all that. 21 root 50 times root 18. Getting a calculator for that bit. Shift cos 21 divided by, I'll put a bracket just to be on the safe side, root 50 times root 18, close the brackets, 45.57 or 45.6 degrees to one decimal place. And we're done there. It's for higher maths. 2018 people on question 5, vectors and collinearity. A, e, B, and C are collinear. State the ratio B to size B to C. So if B divides A to C, we can find A to B and B to C and then compare them. So let's do A to B first. Remember that's B minus A. So that is 5T5 minus, minus 3, 4, minus 7. So now taking away them, 5 minus minus 3 is 8 t minus 4, and 5 minus minus 7 is 12. So we get our a to b, now let's do the same for b to c. So that's c minus b. So that equals 798. Minus 5t5. 7 minus 5 is 2. 
9 minus t, don't worry about them now, that'll be for part b, and 8 minus 5 is 3. And now we're still going to compare the elements. The first element, 8 to 2, well that's 4. Divided by 4, 12 to 3 is 4. So the ratio that b divides a to c, b divides a to c, and the ratio 4 to 1. Part b, state the value of t, well we know that 4 times bc equals ab. So for part b, 4 times BC equals AB. So that means that we can say that 4 lots of 9 minus T is equal to T minus 4. 4 nines is 36 minus 4 T is T minus 4. 36 plus 4, that gives you 40 on this side, equals 4 T plus T is 5 T. So T must equal 8. I there. Anyway, hi, Math 2019, paper 1, question 5 on vectors and collinearity. So it says show that the points A, B, and C are collinear, and then state the ratio that B divides A to C. So let's do part A first. To show that three points are collinear, especially 3D points, we can just compare A to B and vector B to C. So let's do A to B first. Vector is A to B, remember, is B minus A. So vector B is 4 minus 1 and 0 minus a, which is 1, 5, minus 3. So we've got 4 minus 1 on the top is 3, minus 1 minus 5 is minus 6, and 0 minus minus 3 is 3. So we get 3 minus 6 and 3 for the first one. The next one, b to c. That's c minus b. So that is 8 minus 9 and 4. Take away 4 minus 1 and 0. So 8 minus 4 is 4, uh, minus 9 minus minus 1, well that's plus 1, so that's minus 8, and then the last one, 4 minus 0 is 4. Now to show that we are collinear, we need to show that these two vectors are parallel. How do we do that? Well, all you have to do is show that you can times 1 to get the other. So we, if we just compare each element in turn, we do that divided by that, that divided by that, and that divided by that, and make sure we get the same answer. So 4 divided by 3 is the first one. And then we've got minus 8 over minus 6. Well, if I simplify that, divide that by 2, you get 4 over 3. So that's the second element. And then the third element, 4 over 3 again. So we can then say quite easily that b to c is equal to 4 thirds of a to c. a to b, sorry. And therefore... B, C, and A, B are parallel. You could have also done the numbers the other way around and said three quarters and said that A to B is three quarters of B to C and it would make no difference. But we've shown the parallel, and therefore, but B is a common point, which you can see because you've got B, C, and A, B. So you just say B is a common point, and therefore... A, B, and C are collinear. And we're done there. It's great, hi maths, 2019, paper two, question three, on vectors and vector pathways. It says E, A, B, C, D is a rectangular-based pyramid. It tells you that A to B is P, as shown, A to D is Q, as shown there, and e, A to E is R. And we have to express B to E in terms of P and R. So where's B to E? I need to start here and get up to there. So maybe we can take any direction you want. So I can just trace this. I go minus P. So I can write minus P. I've done minus P and I want to get all the way up to E. So I can go up R. So plus R. And that's it. It really is as simple as that. Point F divides BC in the ratio 3 to 1. Express the vector EF in terms of P, Q and R. So EF, just to be clear, is from here down to there. I want to get to there, but I need to go a path that I can actually use. So we could go along there, down there, and then back to there, and that will give me that. So let's just trace that out. I've got minus R plus P. So let's write that down to start with, minus R plus P. And then 
once I've done minus r plus p, I need to go along here. You know, how far along am I going? Well, it says it divides it in the ratio 3 to 1. So if I imagine that this whole length is 4, I've went along 3 out of 4 bits. 3 quarters, and what is b to c's vector? Well, it's the same as this one, because it's parallel. So it's 3 quarters of q. So plus 3 quarters of q, and we're done there. S anyway, high maths, 2015 paper one question. One of vectors. Vectors u and v are perpendicular. Find the value of t. Right, if two vectors are perpendicular, it means the angle between them is 90. And cos of 90 is 0. So u dot v equals 0. So perpendicular means u dot v equals 0. So let's work out u dot v. Start of the exam paper tells you you just times each of the components together. So you do 8 times the i's together plus the j's together plus the k's together times. So u dot v is equal to 8 times minus 3 plus 2 times t plus minus 1 times minus 6. And we know that's going to equal 0. So 8 threes, that's minus 24 plus 2t plus 6 equals 0, minus 24 plus 6 is minus 18, plus 2t equals 0, so 2t must be 18. Moving it over, so t equals 9, and we're done there. Let's go higher maths, 2015, paper 2, question 6. Vectors, vectors P, Q and R are represented in the diagram below. It's a parallelogram, and A, B, E is an equilateral triangle. And it says the size of P is 3, and the angle ABC is 90. And we can see all that in the diagram. So let's jump in and see what it's actually asking us about this question. Evaluate P dot Q plus R. So we can just expand that to say part A, P dot Q plus R is equal to P dot Q plus P dot R. Now, the start exam paper tells us that it's A dot B is si size of A times the size of B times the cost of the angle in between. So we can see that that is size of P, size of Q, cos of the angle in between, plus the size of P times the size of R times the cos of the angle in between. So let's look at the size of P and the size of Q, where it says the size of P is 3, let me just take a note of that, which means all of these are 3, obviously, because it's an equal triangle. So size of P and the size of Q, that's 3 times 3 times the cos of the angle in between those, well, it's an equilateral triangle, so these are 60 degree angles. So we can write 60 degrees for each of them, so it's the cos of 60, plus the size of P again, which is 3 times the size of R, and then the angle in between cos of, well, what's the angle in between P and R? Well, let's have a look. It goes along P, and then R is perpendicular to it, so that's a 90 degree angle. So it's the cos of 90. Well, that is handy. Perpendicular, the cos of 90 is equal to zero. So if two vectors are perpendicular to each other, then this A dot B equals zero for them. So that's great. So now we've got the cos of 60 to work out with our own calculator. So remember, we've got 60 degrees down here. 30 up here, if that was 2, this would be 1 and that would be root 3. So the cos of 60 is a half. So that equals 3 times 3 times a half, plus 3 times the size of r times 0. 3 3 is a 9, times a half is 9 halves, plus nothing is nothing, so we get 9 halves. Question B says express e to c in terms of p, q and r. So let's go back to our diagram and see where e to c is. We want to go from here all the way over to here. Now, we can't go this way because I don't know what this is. So I'm going to go the other way. So I'm going to go E to A. That's minus Q. And then I'm going to go along here. That's plus P. And then straight up here, well, that's parallel to R. And it's the same size, so it is R. So we've got minus Q plus P plus R. So I just need to write that down. Part B. E to C equals minus Q plus P plus R. Little lines underneath these because they're vectors, but that's fine if you missed that. He says, 
Given that a to e dot e to c is 9 root 3 minus 9 halves, find the size of r. Well, wh where's a to e? So a to e is here. So let me just write this out first. We've got a to e dot e to c. Well, we know that a to e is q dot, and e to c is what we just found out in part b. So we can just write that down, minus q plus p plus r. And we can then just expand this and see what we get. So that equals minus q dot q plus q dot p plus q dot r. So then using our formula of q dot q is the size of q times the size of q times the cos of the angle in between, that gives us minus size q, size q, cos, well the angle in between is a vector which is the same, well but imagine my pen's a vector, there's, the other, there's no angle, so it's zero, cos is zero, plus the size of q, size of p, and um, we actually already did that before, it's cos 60, plus the size of q, size of r, and cos so we'll go back up to the diagram and try and find the angle in between Q and R. If I draw R here, say, and Q there, then you've got R and Q. And if you look at this diagram here, there's my Q there, and I've just moved my R there. You should be able to see that this angle here is 30 because 60 plus 30 is 90. So that's a 30 degree angle. So back down here, we've got the cost of 30. Okay, so what does that mean? So we've got the size of Q times the size of Q. The size of Q is 3, so that equals minus 3 times 3 times, and the cos of 0 is 1. Plus, size of Q, size of P, 3 times 3, times the cos of 60, we know is a half already, plus the size of Q, which is 3, times the size of r, and the cos of 30 is root 3 over 2. But the question tells us that all of that equals 9 root 3 minus 9 over 2. So just keeping that in mind. So let's just try and tidy this up. We've got minus 3 times 3 is 9 times 1, so that's minus 9, plus 9 over 2, plus... 3 root 3 over 2 times the size of r equals 9 root 3 minus 9 over 2. So moving everything over to the right hand side, that means we've got 3 root 3 over 2 times r equals 9 root 3 minus 9 over 2. And then <coughs> minus another 9 over 2 plus 9. So that means 3 root 3 over 2r equals, well let's just have a look at that, minus 9 over 2 minus 9 over 2 is minus 18 over 2, 18 over 2 is 9, so that's just minus 9 plus 9 which is 0, so all that's gone, so we've just got 9 root 3. So now we can just times both sides by 2 to get the size of r times 3 root 3 equals 9 times 2 is 18 root 3. So the size of r is 18 root 3 divided by 3 root 3. So that means that the root 3 is cancelled, leaving 18 divided by 3. 3 sixes is 18, so the size of r is 6. And we're done there. We have a math 16, paper 2, question 5 on vectors. The diagram picture shows a model of a water molecule. Relative to a suitable coordinate axis, the oxygen atom is positioned at A minus 2, 2, 5. So there's minus 2, 2, 5. The other two hydrogen atoms are point B and C as shown. Express A to B and A to C in component form. Okay, so for part A, A to B is equal to B minus A. So B is a position vector, minus 10, 18, and 7. Take away minus 2, 2, and 5. Minus 10 minus minus 2 is minus 8, because we're adding. 
18 minus 2 is 16, and 7 minus 5 is 2. So that is our answer to part A, and that is component form, by the way, so stop there. And then A to C is C minus A. So we know C is minus 4, minus 6, 21. Minus A, which was minus 2, 2, 5. So minus 4 plus 2 is minus 2. Minus 6 minus 2 is minus 8. 21 minus 5 is 16. Now we're done there for part A. Part B, hence the last thing, angle BAC. So it's in there. So we know that from the start of the exam paper, we can find A dot B. The start of the exam paper tells you two things. It tells you A dot B is the size of A times the size of B times the cos of the angle in between. But it also tells you that A dot B is just the vectors times together, times the components and add. So we know this vector, A to C and A to B. So we can just do A to B dot A to C and find out what that is. A to B dot A to C is equal to minus 8 times minus 2, the first numbers, plus 16 times minus 8, the second numbers, plus 2 times 16, the first numbers. Calculator for all these sums, that gives me 16 minus 1, 2, 8, plus 32, and a calculator that gives me minus 80. So I know what A dot, there, minus 80, so now I need the size of AB, because that would be the size of A, basically. So AB, remember, is minus 8, 16, 2, so it's a square root of minus 8 squared plus 16 squared plus 2 squared. And a calculator that gives you 3, 2, 4, which is the square root of 3, 2, 4 is 18. Similarly, the size of A to C is equal to, well, A to C is minus 2 minus 8, 16. Square root of minus 2 squared plus minus 8 squared plus 16 squared is the square root of 3, 2, 4 as well. Same size, which it should be because it's a molecule, but never mind that. That's 18. So we now know that looking at our a dot b is the size of a size of b cos theta. We already know that dot product is minus 80. So we can see that minus 80 equals 18 times 18 times the cos of theta. Or in other words, cos theta is minus 80 over 18 times 18. So theta is the inverse cos of minus 80 over 18 times 18. That equals 104.3 degrees. And there is only one answer because it is an acute angle, so we're done there. Obviously, just a note, you could have used the cast diagram and did 80 over 18 times 18 and then picked the correct angle using the test diagram, but in this case, you can get away with putting a minus in the calculator on this one occasion. Yes, great, hi, maths. 2017, paper one, question five. Vectors U and V are five, one, minus one, and three, minus eight, six. Find U dot V. So start the exam paper, U dot V, there's two things it tells you. It tells you it times the components together, or it tells you if it's using an angle, and there's no angle here, so I'm just times in the components. So for part A, u dot v, that's just equal to 5 times 3, the top numbers, plus 1 times minus 8, the second numbers, plus minus 1 times 6. So working out these, being careful of our negatives, 5 times 3 is 15, 1 times minus 8 is minus 8, minus 1 times 6 is minus 6, uh, 8 and 6 is 14, so that equals 1. And we're done there. Part B says the vector W makes an angle of pi over 3 with U. And the size of W of the modulus is root 3. Find U dot W. So again, the start of the exam paper tells you that A dot B equals the size of A, size of B, cos theta, angle in between. So that means that u dot w equals the size of u, the size of w, times the cos of the angle. Well, we have the size of w, 
so we don't have the size of u. So we have a size of w, but not the size of u, but we've got u in part 1, 5, 1, minus 1. So a reminder, the size of u is just like Pythagoras, where well, it is Pythagoras. So it's 5 squared plus 1 squared plus minus 1 squared, and that's national 5, that's it actually. So that is 25 plus 1 plus 1 is 26, 27. And I'll just leave it as a root. So that means that our u dot w is equal to the size of u, root 27, times the size of w, which is root 3, times the cos of theta, but the angle is pi over 3. So this is going to use exact values. 3 times 27 is 81. So that is the square root of 81. And then we need to find the cos of pi over 3. So I always think in degrees, personally, 180 divided by 3 is 60. So this gives me my exact value, triangle of 60 and 30 degrees. And we've got 2, 1, and root 3. So we're looking for the cos of 60. So that is of adjacent over hypotenuse, if that's a half. So that's root 81 times 1 half. That's 9 times a half, or 9 halves. And we're done there. It's for your high maths 2017 paper 3 question 5 on vectors. Express P to Q in terms of I, J, K. So we want to go from P to Q. I can't get there directly, but do we know P to R? Yes, we do. And do we know R to Q? Yes, we do. So we can just add them together. So for part A, P to Q is equal to P to R plus R to Q. So P to R is 9, 5, 2. 9, 5 and 2. Plus R to Q is minus 12, minus 9, 3. Adding them together, 9 minus 12 is minus 3. 5 minus 9 is minus 4. And 2 plus 3 is 5. And we're done there. Now writing it in terms of i, j, k, that's minus 3i minus 4j plus 5k. Part B. The point S divides qr in the ratio of 1 to 2. So let's look what qr is. So 1 to 2, there's 1, there's 2, clearly that's a bigger part. And it says, show that ps is equal to this. So we want to go from p to s. So we can go p to r plus 2 thirds of the way along r to q. So let me just write that down. p to s is equal to p to r plus 2 thirds of the way along r to q. So PTR was 9, 5, 2, plus 2 thirds of minus 12, minus 9, 3. So that gives me 9, 5, and 2, plus 12 divided by 3 is 4 times 2 is 8, so minus 8. 9 divided by 3 is 3 times 2 is 6, so minus 6. 3 divided by 3 is 1, times 2 is 2. So we get 9 minus 8 is 1. 5 minus 6 is minus 1, 2 plus 2 is 4, so that equals i minus j plus 4k, as required. Question 5c, hence find the size of angle QPS. So QPS, that's that one here, so we need P to Q dot P to S. And it's the size of the angle in between, because to start with example, it says A dot B was the size of A times the size of B times the cos of theta. So let's just take a note of that, A dot B size of a size of b cos theta so we need this a dot b and we need the size of a and the size of b but a was just our first vector and b is our second vector so the size of let's do p to q dot p t s first so we just times each component together minus three times one is minus three plus Minus 4 times minus 1 is 4, plus 5 times 4, which is 20. So adding all that together, we get 21. So now we need the size of P to Q and the size of P to S. Size of P to Q, remember that's just like Pythagoras, so it's just the square root of minus 3 squared plus minus 4 squared plus 5 squared. 
Well, that's 9 plus 16 is 25, plus 25 is 50, so root 50. No need to simplify because you're just going to use it in the formula. Only simplify at the end if you have to. Size of PTS. Square root then of 1 squared plus minus 1 squared plus 4 squared. That's 1 plus 1 plus 16 is 18. 18. So that means that we can work out our cos theta now. Because our cos theta is just going to be a dot b, so this, divided by these two, which is these two. Nothing to work out, just do it, put, write it. So we've just got 21 over root 50 root 18. So that means that theta is the inverse cos of all that. 21 root 50 times root 18. Getting a calculator for that bit. Shift cos 21 divided by, I'll put a bracket just to be on the safe side, root 50 times root 18, close the brackets, 45.57 or 45.6 degrees to one decimal place. And we're done there. Yes, we have maths for 18 people to do question 8 on the vector scale of product. U and V are defined as V's vectors, find U dot V. Start of exam paper tells you what U dot V is. You times each element and you add. So U dot V is equal to minus 1 times minus 7 plus 4 times 8 plus minus 3 times 5. That gives us 7 plus 32 minus 15. 7 plus 32 is 39, 39 minus 15 is 24. Okay, part B, find the acute angle between U and V. So again, the start exam paper, A dot B is equal to the size of A plus the size of B times the cos of theta. So we know the size of, we know that A dot B, so we need to find the size of U and V. So the size of U is equal to the square root of minus 1 squared plus 4 squared plus minus 3 squared. Minus 1 squared plus 4 squared plus minus 3 squared. That's the square root of 1 plus 16 plus 9. That is 26. And then the size of V is equal to the square root of minus 7 squared plus 8 squared plus 5 squared. Forty nine plus sixty four plus twenty five. Use the calculator anytime you want. That's one three eight. So that means that u dot v is equal to we know that's twenty four. So twenty four equals square root of twenty six, square root of one three eight, cos theta. So rearranging for cos theta. That means that cos theta is 24 over the square root of 26 times the square root of 138. So our theta is the inverse cos of all that. So we just get a calculator and work it out. So the inverse cos, 24 over root. 26 times root 138. That gives me an answer of 66.38. So theta equals 66.84 degrees. And we're done there. Hey, Scree High Maths 2019, paper 1, question 9 on vectors and scalar product. Vectors U and V have these components, where P is a member of the real numbers. Find an expression for U dot V for part 1. Well, U dot V is told to you at the start of the exam paper. If you forget, it's either got an angle in it or it is times each element, then plus the second element, then plus the third element all times together. So I can just write that down. I've got P times 2P plus 16 plus minus 2 times minus 3, plus 4 times 6. So then we can just simplify that. Expand my bracket, I get 2p squared plus 16p plus 2 3s are 6, minus times a minus is a plus, 6 4s is 24, 
So that's 2p squared plus 16p plus 30 is our simplified u dot v. Part 2. Determine the values for p for which u and v are perpendicular. Well, u do, if u and v are perpendicular, that means that u dot v equals 0. And that, why is that? Well, if you look at some exam paper, you're given the formula sheet which says that u dot v is also the size of a times the size of b times the cosine of theta. Now, if theta was 90, cosine 90 is equal to 0, so u dot v is 0 when they're perpendicular. But you could just memorise that. So u dot v equals 0 means I can write 2p squared plus 16p plus 30 equals 0. Take 2 out as a common factor, p squared plus 8p plus 15. So that's a quadratic. So from National 5 Maths, I'm looking for double brackets probably. Two numbers at times together to make 15, but add together to make 8. Well, that's 5 and 3. So it's plus 5 and plus 3. So that means that p plus 3 equals 0 or p plus 5 equals 0. Solving both of the equations, we get p equals minus 3 or p equals minus 5. And we're done there. Part B says, determine the value of p for which u and v are parallel. So if they're parallel, that means that I can times this one by something to get this one. So let's just compare the elements. I've got minus 3 over minus 2, that's 3 halves. And similarly, I've got 6 over 4, which is also 3 halves. That means that if I times this one by 3 halves, I get this one. So I can just write that down. 3 halves of p equals 2p plus 16. So for part b, 3 halves of p equals 2p plus 16. So I've got that equation to solve. So if I put brackets around that side, uh, that means I can times by the bottom. So 3p is equal to 2 times 2p plus 16. 3p equals 4p plus 32. So taking that over to the other side, you would get minus p equals 32, or p equals minus 32. And we're done there. S we have maths for 19, paper 2, question 14, magnitude and scale product of a vector. We've got two vectors, u and v, such that the size of u is 4, the size of v is 5, and u dot u plus v is 21. Find the size of the angle in between. So let's start off with, if we look at the start of the exam paper, a dot b is size a, size b, times the cost of the angle in between them. So we're going to kind of use that fact. So we've got u dot u plus v. Well, we can expand that just by saying we've got u dot u plus u dot v. So u dot u is equal to the size of u times the size of u times the cos of theta. But what's the angle in between a vector and itself? Is, well, it's nothing. So it's the cos of nothing. Plus the size of u times the size of v times the cos of theta, because we don't know that angle, but that equals 21. Well, the cos of 0 is 1. So we've got the size of u times the size of u, 4 times 4 times the cos of 0 is 1, plus 4 times 5 times the cos of theta equals 21. So that gives me 16 plus 20 cos theta equals 21. 21 minus 16 is 5, so 20 cos theta is equal to 5, which means that cos theta is equal to 5 over 20, or a quarter. So then, put into our calculator, the inverse cos of a quarter, that's 75.5 degrees, and it is just the angle in between the two vectors is acute, so we don't need to do a cast diagram or anything like that, 75.5 degrees is our answer. So theta equals 75.5 degrees, and we're done there.